All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Guy Lancaster. I'm the editor of the Online Encyclopedia of Arkansas, which is a project of the Central Arkansas Library System. And I'd like to welcome you all here today for this month's Legacies and Lunch presentation featuring Rachel Patton, the Executive Director of Preserve Arkansas. Uh, before we get there, I want you to let you know that we have uh, some other interesting upcoming events. If you go to cals.org, that's C-A-L-S dot O-R-G, you can see a, a list of those. Um, they include programs relating to our summer reading club, including an upcoming lecture this month on crayfish in Arkansas. Uh, we had one last month by Stan Trouth on uh, snakes in Arkansas, specifically lots of pictures of snake heads. So you can find that on the YouTube channel of the Central Arkansas Library System if you're interested. Next month for our Legacies and Lunch, we are featuring Kelly Houston Jones to talk about her new book on slavery in Arkansas. And then in September, we are featuring Carla Coleman, who will be talking about Oakland Fraternal Cemetery. And September, I hear, is the first one that we're planning to have back in person. Uh, we're going to do a Zoom simulcast, but that may be our first uh, in-person legacies and lunch in quite some time. So I hope you'll join us. Um, if the numbers keep going up, we'll probably have to revisit that. Uh, so get vaccinated while you're at it, if you're not already. Um, questions, if you can put questions in the chat, we will have a brief Q&A after the session. Now let me introduce uh, Rachel Patton. As I noted, she's the Executive Director of Preserve Arkansas and has been for a number of years. Preserve Arkansas is the state's only nonprofit that is dedicated to the preservation of Arkansas's uh, historic heritage. Um, and every year they release a list of endangered places in Arkansas and this has become a very influential uh, project that they undertake, highlighting a lot of buildings and other sites that are in danger and uh, has motivated uh, the, the recovery of, of several historic properties in the state. So they do tremendous work. Uh, with that, I am going to turn it over to Rachel Patton to talk to us about the current list of Arkansas's most endangered places. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Guy said, I'm Rachel Patton. Let me get my next slide going. There we go. Really quickly before I tell you about our latest list of Arkansas's most endangered historic places and then some successful saves uh, that we've had over the years and then things that are still endangered from previous lists that we continue to work on. I wanna tell you quickly about Preserve Arkansas. We were founded in 1981 as the Historic Preservation Alliance of Arkansas. So some of you may know us as the Alliance, but we've gone by a shortened name of Preserve Arkansas for several years now. And this year, 2021, uh, marks our 40th anniversary of incorporation. We are the only statewide nonprofit advocate for historic preservation. Uh, we work hand in hand with the State Historic Preservation Office and other local preservation organizations around the state. And we work to build stronger communities by reconnecting our Kansans to our heritage and empowering people to do the important work of saving Arkansas's historic places. And we achieve that mission through a mixture of advocacy, education, and by providing technical assistance to owners of historic properties and other interested individuals. The Most Endangered Places program started in Arkansas in 1999. It's modeled after the 11 most endangered places that are announced annually by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. And they've done that since 1987. And so the Arkansas program is modeled after that, although we do not include 11 places on our list every year. We just include uh, what we merit uh, as worthy for 
the list every year. It's announced in May during National Preservation Month and Arkansas Heritage Month. And this pie chart shows you the numbers of our most endangered places and how they have fared over the years from 99 to present. We could do a lot better uh, in Arkansas with our endangered historic places. But um, as you will see and probably understand from this presentation, sometimes it takes, it takes a village and it takes a long time uh, for some of these projects to come to fruition. There's been 150 places in Arkansas on the most endangered list since 1999, and almost half of those are still endangered today. Some of them are stabilized and in varying degrees of progress has been made over the years on those properties, but I don't put them into the saved column until they are fully rehabilitated or restored and in active use. And so that number is about 30% of the places that have been on the most endangered list. And then you see the, the green pie piece are about 10% of those 150 properties have been destroyed. And then the yellow piece of pie says saved slash endangered. That's another 10% of the 150 places. And that's for larger thematic listings, um, things like entire historic districts that might have a thousand plus properties in them where we've made progress, but there's still a lot more work to be done. The first property on this year's list, which was smaller than in previous years, by the way, we only had three properties that were included on the 2021 most endangered places list. And I should back up and say that the purpose of the list that Guy alluded to this at the beginning, but the purpose of the list is to raise awareness of these properties and their historic significance and then to advocate for their preservation. And so this list is chosen by public nomination. We solicit nominations from anyone in the state who wants to nominate a property. They don't have to be a member of Preserve Arkansas to nominate a place for the most endangered list. And then there's a committee that's made up of Preserve Arkansas board members, historians, architects, archaeologists, who review those nominations each year. And they determine what to include on the list based on the property's level of significance. And that can be local, statewide, or national significance. And then the degree and eminence of the threat to that property, which could be a variety of things from imminent demolition to neglect to insufficient funds to incompatible you know infill construction or proposed development on the site that doesn't fit um, with it so there's all different kinds of ways that properties can be endangered and they also consider the level of local support for saving that historic place so out of the nominated sites from the public uh, these three were chosen for 2021 and two of them have gotten quite a bit of attention, um, kind of higher profile sites that you may have seen in the news um, from Little Rock, first being the Pike Fletcher Terry House. Most of you have likely seen this place and been to it. It's located on 12 lots in the heart of Little Rock's MacArthur Park Historic District. It is a beautiful piece of property and more like a park by itself. This house is the state's premier example of Greek Revival style architecture. It was built in 1840, and it's one of the oldest buildings in the capital city and the home to three families who played significant roles in the economic, political, and cultural development of the state of Arkansas. The Pike Fletcher Terry House was built by Albert Pike, who was a Boston native who came to Arkansas in the 1830s. Pike was a teacher, poet, newspaper man, attorney, Confederate general, and a Mason. After living near Van Buren, Pike moved to Little Rock, where he became the editor of the Arkansas Advocate newspaper. And then while he was doing that, um, he read law and passed the bar in 1837. He went on to make a great deal of money as an attorney, often representing American Indian groups um, in federal litigation. In 1840, he was named executor of the failed Arkansas State Bank. 
Pike left the state after the Civil War. And in 1871, he gave his home to his daughter, who leased the building to the Arkansas Female College from 1873 until 1889. And then in 1889, it became the home of the Fletcher family. John Gould Fletcher Sr. and his wife, Adolphine Krause Fletcher, had three children. It's a little confusing because their kids, two of their children had the same names as them, Adolphine, John Gould Jr., and Mary. The elder John Fletcher was a prominent Arkansan in his own right. He was a banker and a cotton broker, and he was the mayor of Little Rock from 1875 until 1881. Two of the Fletcher children, Adolphine and John Gould Jr., became well-known Arkansans as well. John Gould Fletcher Jr. distinguished himself as a poet, receiving the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1939 for his work, Selected Poems. And Adolphine married United States Congressman David D. Terry, and they lived in this home for most of their lives. Adolphine Fletcher Terry was a civic leader who worked to improve the state's education system, schools, and libraries. She was an advocate for women's rights, and she fought against racism. She was appalled by Governor Faubus's use of National Guardsmen to prevent the integration of Central High School in 1957. Her concern, of course, grew in 1958 when a ballot measure supported by Fabus, resulted in the closure of the city's high schools as a way of avoiding desegregation. With two of her friends, she convened a meeting at her home, which resulted in the creation of the Women's Emergency Committee to open our schools. Many meetings of the Women's Emergency Committee were held in the Terry House. Thus, years later, the names of the once secret committee members were etched into the glass on the windows of the home's conservatory. Mrs. Terry also helped establish a group called Stop or Stop This Outrageous Purge when segregationists began firing teachers who were deemed to be too liberal on race. Members of Stop and the Women's Emergency Committee successfully organized a recall election and removed three Fabus loyalists on the school board and the schools reopened. In 1964, Adolphine and her sister Mary deeded the Pike Fletcher Terry House to the city of Little Rock. So this is something that's important uh, now whenever we're discussing future plans for the house. A lot of people don't understand who owns the house, who's responsible for it, who do we talk to about the house, and it's, it's complicated. In 1964, the sisters deeded the house to the city of Little Rock. And in the deed, it says, quote, for the use and benefit of the Arkansas Arts Center, which is now known as the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts. Beginning in the late 70s, the house was renovated using public and private funds. And in 1985, the Terry Mansion became the Arkansas Arts Center's Decorative Arts Museum. At that time, an endowment had been established to maintain the Decorative Arts Museum, along with an additional appropriation from the city each year. In 2004, the name of the facility was changed to the Terry House Community Gallery. But at some point in the last decade, the Art Center closed the Community Gallery and the house has been vacant, save a few outdoor events since then. In 2017, preservation architect Tommy Jameson conducted a condition assessment on the house and estimated that it needed about $1 million in repairs. Now deferred maintenance has taken its toll. Things have gotten worse since 2017 and the building's exterior is showing signs of significant disrepair. So I'll show you some photos here. It doesn't, cause you know, it doesn't look so bad from the first picture that I had up, but whenever you come closer to the house and look around, you can see obvious signs of water penetration that are resulting in brick and wood failure. This is um, some brick failure on the porch foundation, and you can see rotting wood on the porch. There are multiple places on the front porch where I wouldn't recommend standing. And there's a couple more. 
there is quite a bit of visible deterioration on the east side of the house around the conservatory. And these are those windows that I mentioned that have the names of the Women's Emergency Committee etched into the glass. Um, so quite an important space uh, in the house. And so you see obvious wood rot and det deterioration around those windows. This is a close up view of the sill there around the windows. And this is another um, concerning picture uh, showing damage just above uh, that solarium or conservatory space um, to the soffit underneath the eave there. And that damage is probably indicative of the, the integrated box gutter system failing. So if that is backed up in some way and it's not working for whatever reason, that means the water is, is going somewhere. And so I haven't been inside the house, but I can only guess that water is probably getting into the house by this point. This is uh, the west side of the house, um, the now enclosed sleeping porch, and you can see uh, paint failure and wood rot there. And then finally, it's hard to see from far away, but brick failure at the chimney on the west side of the house. So for every day that these deferred maintenance issues, um, because these are things, paint, brick and wood repair, things that can be uh, prevented if maintained on a regular basis. When this de deferred maintenance goes unaddressed, as things stack up over the years, it can get quite expensive. And so there's been a group that has wanted to, to raise the alarm and to stop this deterioration before it gets out of hand. And there's a lot of strong public support to save this place. The Friends of the Terry Mansion Facebook group has more than a thousand followers. And they've done letter writing campaigns and social media campaigns that resulted in a fence being repaired already at the site. That was one concern is that the property was completely unsecured. Um, so with this listing, we hope to raise more awareness of this home significance to a statewide audience and beyond, beyond Little Rock, and the need for preservation to encourage emergency repairs to the house and to help find a sustainable use for the house that will benefit all stakeholders involved. And the most recent update on efforts to save this house that I can tell you are that I believe um, architect Tommy Jameson has been engaged to do an update on his 2017 condition assessment. So to come and give an accurate assessment of, of now what is needed and what that dollar amount will likely be um, for the city to know how much it would cost to make these repairs. And that's, that's what I can tell you right now. So more to come on that. We continue to monitor that situation and be ready to help. War Memorial Golf Course is the second listing for 2021, also in Little Rock. The historic Fair Park Golf Course, now known as War Memorial Golf Course, is significant as the oldest municipal golf course in Little Rock and for its association with the development of public recreation in the capital city. In the mid-1920s, the city of Little Rock purchased land for a park that was then at its western edge and they called it Fair Park as the site had hosted the state fair in 1922. The original master plan for Fair Park included a golf course, zoo, midway, swimming pool, baseball stadium, and other amenities. In 1929, the city's first golf course commission chose Herman Heckbar, the longtime golf pro and groundskeeper at the Country Club of Little Rock, to design the municipal course at Fair Park. The footprint of that design, which aligned with the existing topography of the land, underwent only a few alterations from the course's opening in the 1930s until its closure in 2019. During the Great Depression, the Works Progress Administration constructed a native stone clubhouse, gazebo, and stone pillars at the Fair Park Golf Course. The park was renamed War Memorial Park in 1948 after the completion of War Memorial Stadium. 
War Memorial Golf Course continued to serve as a municipal course until July 2019, when the city of Little Rock closed it for budgetary reasons. The golf course, along with its WPA built structures and site features, was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in September 2020. Because the golf course is now listed in the National Register, the city is eligible for some grant funds through the Arkansas Historic Preservation Program to rehabilitate buildings and structures on the property. Additionally, and I'll start going through the photos, um, at War Memorial Golf Course, buildings like the clubhouse could be rehabilitated with the help of historic tax credits if done in partnership with a private entity. So we will look through here first. You see it's beautiful green space in the heart of Little Rock. Okay, there's some of that WPA uh, native stonework in the golf course area, the shelter and restroom, and then some of the stone walls. And there's the clubhouse, which fronts right on Markham today. And that building has a full basement. And so that's the backside of the building is kind of built into the hillside. And that whole backside was originally um, just an open two-story porch on the back that overlooked the course and it was enclosed and uh, made to look the way it does today in the late 1980s. So with this listing, Preserve Arkansas seeks to raise awareness of the property's significance as well as those incentives for rehabilitation that are available now because it's listed in the National Register of Historic Places and to advocate for its preservation as open green space in the middle of the city of Little Rock and to keep it accessible to everyone who wants to enjoy the park. Um, in anticipation of some questions about uh, Mayor Scott's Rebuild the Rock uh, proposal, tax proposal, um, this is, if you've seen the proposal that he's put forth, and that's available on the City of Little Rock's website. If you're interested, there's a PowerPoint showing you kind of what's generally proposed if that sales tax does pass in the fall uh, for War Memorial Park and the golf course. Um, and they propose in the area where I showed you, um, which is the open green space where all of the golf greens were, um, they propose, I believe, seven baseball and softball fields which would, I'm sure, require all of that area to be completely leveled um, and not to be, you know, rolling hills like it is now. So that's just for your information. That's one of the reasons why we included this on the list. And the third listing from 2021 is the Dr. Robert George Williams House in a little place called Parkdale in Ashley County in far southeast Arkansas. And Parkdale is about halfway between Hamburg and New Dora. And there's the house. Located southeast of Hamburg on the eastern bank of Bayou Bartholomew, Parkdale was originally known as Poplar Bluff, named after a grove of poplar trees at the steamboat landing. And yes, this is fascinating to me that, that steamboats did come up uh, Bayou Bartholomew as far north as Parkdale and a little bit farther. Beginning in the 1850s, the community prospered as an agricultural and trade hub on the bayou. When the railroad came through Poplar Bluff in the 1890s, the name of the town was changed to Parkdale in order to avoid confusion with the larger town of Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Parkdale reincorporated in 1902 and sawmills were constructed to process timber from the nearby land. The Dr. Robert George Williams house was constructed in 1903, about one tenth of a mile west of Main Street in Parkdale. The modest two and a half story house was remodeled in 1917 to reflect the popular colonial revival style of architecture. So that's given it its current appearance. They built on uh, to the back of the house and they built that two-story wraparound porch on the front that you see. 
Robert Williams was born at Jones, Louisiana, about 12 miles south of Parkdale, and he attended high school at Hamburg. After receiving his medical degree from the University of Louisville in 1895, he lived for a short time in New Orleans before returning to Parkdale, where he opened a medical practice. He was responsible for the founding of the Parkdale Bank in 1910 and served as its president for many years. Dr. Williams also served as president of the Parkdale School Board and played a key role in the funding and construction of Parkdale High School in 1909. Additionally, Dr. Williams maintained his medical practice at Parkdale for more than 30 years. After his death in 1945, the Williams House was occupied by his son and daughter-in-law, James and Dorothy Williams. The home remained in the family until the mid 70s and was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1984. The Dr. Williams house appears to have remained in good to fair condition until the mid 2010s, until about 2015. I think um, our friends at Abandoned Arkansas, if you go to their website, you can see uh, lots of photos in abandoned and endangered historic buildings throughout the state, but I believe they photographed this house in 2015 or 16, and you'll be amazed if you go look, you'll be amazed at how much better it looked then than it does now. It's, it's deteriorated significantly in the last few years. Currently, the house is vacant, and it's overgrown, and the porch is failing. There's at least one small hole in the roof that's allowing um, water damage to the interior as well. And the once manicured lawn, as you can see, is now overgrown. I'll show you some photos here. The porch, to me, seems to be really the worst thing on this house. And you can see that they've tried to shore it up on the first and second floor there, where it's just not, not working. So the house was recently acquired by a nonprofit organization based in Southeast Arkansas, and we listed the home hoping to raise awareness of the home's delicate condition and to facilitate a dialogue with the new owners and make them aware of financial incentives for the building's rehabilitation. Because again, in a similar situation to the other properties, um, it's listed in the National Register of Historic Places. And if it's owned by a municipal government or a nonprofit organization, it may qualify for grant funding through the Arkansas Historic Preservation Program. So wanted to make them aware of that. And I believe they are interested in pursuing uh, rehabilitation of the house. So now I'm going to tell you, go back and go through a few uh, successful saves of places that have been on past year's most endangered lists that have been saved and then we'll come back and talk about um, some other places that are still endangered and give you some updates on those. So this is a few high pro higher profile successful saves. The Johnny Cash Boyhood Home at Dias in Mississippi County in Northeast Arkansas. Um, I'm sure that most of you are familiar with this house. Um, so at the Dias Colony, can, it owes its uh, rehabilitation and restoration uh, largely to Arkansas State University when their ASU Heritage Sites program was able to acquire the main administration building, the old theater building, the Johnny Cash Boyhood Home, and other structures at Dias, which was a resettlement colony during the Depression, um, and bring that back. This was a major restoration project for the house. The Rower Japanese American Relocation Center Cemetery in Southeast Arkansas. This is another formerly uh, most endangered places listing. And the cemetery was repaired and re the monuments restored with a grant from the National Park Service Japanese American Confinement Sites Program um, with cooperation from UALR and ASU to restore those monuments, which had been badly weathered and vandalized, damaged over the years. But the Rower Cemetery is all that remains at the Rower 
Japanese American Relocation Center site, uh, one of two relocation centers um, in Southeast Arkansas from World War II. This is the Springfield Desert Bridge uh, built in 1874. It's the oldest bridge in Arkansas. And this bridge was relocated in order to save it. It originally spanned Cavern Creek at Springfield on the Springfield Desert Road. And it was moved uh, by a company out of Grinnell, Iowa called Working Bridges. And that's what they do. They save historic bridges all over the country. And they were able to move this bridge and restore it. And you can see obviously the, the new railing that's been installed uh, for safety precautions and add this into part of the trail system at Lake Beaver Fork in Conway. And this effort was quite remarkable. It required the cooperation of the city of Conway, Faulkner County, and the Faulkner County Historical Society. But they didn't end up taking any of the Federal Highway Department grant funding for this project. So it was, it was a massive undertaking for them. This is the Woodman of the Union Building. This is on Malvern Avenue in Hot Springs. This is the last of the African-American bathhouses that were once in this part of town that's standing. And this building was rehabilitated with the help of federal historic tax credits and low income housing tax credits to serve as senior housing. The Thompson building on Central Avenue in downtown Hot Springs is the next one. And it's worth noting here too that that after the Majestic Hotel fire in 2014, Preserve Arkansas listed all of downtown hot springs on the most endangered places list because there were so many, including the Thompson building. And I think that was kind of that listing. And then this, this building was also included individually on the list. But I think that that really did prompt um, some people to take action and for, for things to start happening in downtown Hot Springs. Um, they didn't want any other buildings to be lost to fire like the Majestic. And it was such an issue with a whole lot of the buildings on Central, and some of them are still like this, where the first floor had been occupied by retail for years, but nobody had ever addressed the upper floors for 30 to 40 years plus. Um, so they were just sitting there vacant and deteriorating and really creating a major fire hazard because they were not up to code. So this building was one of those as well and um, had major damage on the upper floors, but was completely rehabilitated with the federal and state historic tax credits and now serves as the Waters Hotel with a restaurant and a shop on the first floor and a rooftop bar. And then this is my uh, successful save, Helena High School. This is one that I went back and got some before pictures to show you. Um, Guy and I were talking about, you know, sometimes it's hard to visualize that, that these most endangered listings can actually come back and that they can be saved. And that my answer is yes, it can be done. Um, so this is the Helena High School on the front before and note the massive hole in the facade there. This is the interior before, and this is it now. It's completely rehabilitated with the help of historic tax credits, and this one also took advantage of the low-income housing tax credit as well, and so it's now apartments. This is the Mosaic State Temple on Broadway in Little Rock. Um, the Mosaic Templars Cultural Center, this is all part of that complex now, but you see Mosaic Templars Cultural Center uh, on the right of this photo at the corner of 9th and Broadway, um, one of the key buildings from the Black Commercial District in Little Rock that's left standing. And the building on the left in this photo, the Mosaic State Temple, is the only one of those three that you see that's actually the original historic building on that site. The other two uh, sadly were destroyed by fire and had to be reconstructed uh, by the Department of Arkansas Heritage in 2008. And so the Mosaic State Temple was privately owned 
And since it was the only historic building that was part of that complex remaining, it was very concerning whenever it went up for auction a few years ago. And so the Department of Arkansas Heritage was able to purchase that, uh, I believe in 2017, and has rehabilitated that to serve as office space. This is an example of an entire historic district, the Central High School Neighborhood Historic District that's been put on the most endangered places list. And there's been great, great work and huge strides have been made in this neighborhood. Um, and there's still a lot more work to do. And people are still doing that work, but it's not, it's, it's a process. And you see this house, that's a before and after of this house. Um, that's at the corner of Summit and Daisy Bates. And then some updates on listings that are still endangered that were on the list uh, just last year that we've spent a lot of time on in the past year advocating, um, sometimes behind the scenes, sometimes not. This is the Army and Navy General Hospital Historic District in downtown Hot Springs. Um, I, I hope all of you are, from, are familiar with this property. And if you're not, then go to Hot Springs and go downtown and you can't miss it. It's up on the hill. It's this commanding hospital building up on the hill right above Bathhouse Row. And the, pic the building you see pictured is the main hospital from 1933. And the Army and Navy General Hospital Historic District, what you see is this building uh, from downtown and from Reserve Street but it's really about 21 acres that goes back behind this and goes all the way up to the boundary of the national park and the mountain back behind um, and contains some 30 buildings it's a huge complex so this was there you go that'll give you an idea of the size of the main hospital building it's huge but it's in pretty good shape right now um, i toured it last year and it really is in good shape um, and the other buildings are in varying states of repair um, as you look around the campus. But this main building has been our, our major concern. This property um, was constructed and, and built by the Army and Navy as a joint hospital, joint military hospital site. And it's the only one that they built uh, specifically because of its proximity to thermal waters, to the hot spring waters. So, Similar to the bathhouses on Bathhouse Row, the hot spring water is piped directly into the first floor of the Army and Navy Hospital, and they use that for water therapy and for, uh, you know, a national leader in the treatment of arthritis and polio uh, for veterans coming back, um, especially after World War II. So this site was operated by the Army and Navy until 1960, whenever they gave it to uh, the state of Arkansas and Arkansas Rehabilitation Services had operated this as a rehabilitation center, a residential facility for adults with all different types of uh, developmental disabilities and just workforce development center and several other things. But it was closed down by the state um, in 2019 in the fall. And it was planned for this to revert back to the federal government. That was the way that, that the law stipulated that if it wasn't being used for these health education or rehabilitation purposes, that it would come back uh, to the Department of the Army. Well, it didn't turn out to be that easy. And um, we've all found that out since then. So it's been a learning experience and, um, We've helped to try to facilitate communications with uh, the Department of the Army through connections with the National Trust for Historic Preservation and the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation and the state of Arkansas and to try to get everybody on the same page. But um, as of today, this property is still officially in the state of Arkansas ownership. The reversion has not taken place uh, because the Secretary of the Army would not accept it since the state of Arkansas had used it for so long, um, they understandably were not expecting to have this given back to them. So we continue to work um, to try to get the ownership issue resolved. And then once that happens, 
um, likely this would go through uh, the General Services Administration property disposal process, which could take a while. Um, so we'll continue to work with our federal delegation to help to expedite the process as much as possible. In the meantime, the property is relatively secured. Um, there is a fence around it. It's not completely you know, set up to where no one can get access to the property if they try really hard. But the National Park Police uh, go around and, and check on this on a regular basis. And they do have um, some security uh, services nearby. And then also they're keeping the grass mowed at least through the summer. But I have some more photos of this property because a lot of people are interested in it. And it really is a beautiful building. And the state of Arkansas spent quite a bit of money, that's the skylight um, in the vestibule, doing rehab rehabilitation on the interior before, not long before they decided to, to vacate it. That's looking from the top tower toward the Arlington. And that's looking off the roof. Uh, back toward the mountain. So you can see some of those buildings I was talking about that you probably haven't seen before. But former uh, nurses and physicians quarters back there are what you see. This property of the old Lafayette County Jail. This was built about 1830. Um, it was the original jail um, at the first county seat of Lafayette County, which was about 10 miles southwest of Louisville, where the current seat is. Uh, the cabin was moved in the late 60s to the grounds of the current courthouse in Louisville, and the Lafayette County Historical Society did restoration work on the cabin at that time, but years later, it needed some major repairs. So in 2009, it was moved again uh, to its current location at the Lafayette County Conservation District office. And now it's in desperate need of some, some critical repair. And we've had a log cabin expert has gone down and assessed the condition of this jail. And there is a lot of interest in trying to save this. And it might require another move to a different location. Um, but Preserve Arkansas has continued to, to help with that effort and explore all the options. That's a picture of the side where the chimney used to be. This is something from last year's list as well, the old Pocahontas High School, the old rock building. If you're from that part of the state, that's what you call it. Um, this one had some unfortunate modifications to its roof line. Uh, so it's not listed in the National Register, but we included it on the most endangered list because there was so much community support for saving this place. And this building was so recognizable and important to people who had graduated from Pocahontas High School. It was built in 1939 by the National Youth Administration and the Works Progress Administration. And it served as, there's an old picture that shows you the original roof line. It was called the Community House, the Pocahontas Community House. And in that spot in 1941, um, the precursor, what's now Williams Baptist College, was founded in this building. Uh, Williams Baptist, of course, is now at Walnut Ridge, but it used to be here in Pocahontas in that building. And then in later years, it became the school's auditorium and classroom space. And then most recently, you can see that's a current picture that I took inside the school last summer um, where it was in use as the cafeteria upstairs. But the school district had plans um, to demolish this as, as well as the majority of the other buildings on their campus and replace it with a new high school on the same footprint um, using state funds from the Department of Education. And so we've worked with them to try to, to advocate for them to reallocate some of those funds for rehabilitation of this facility uh, to address some issues that they have with the building. As you can see, it's, it's not in terrible shape um, at all, and it was in use um, up until very recently. So um, we continue to work with them on that. Some of the construction was contingent on an additional millage, and in that election, it was defeated. They, they weren't able to pass 
uh, the millage last summer, and I believe in large part due to advocates who insisted that they rework their plan for the new high school to include preservation of at least part of the facade of this building. Sibio Jones House, this is one that we've worked on um, for a few years. Uh, it was listed, I believe, in 2018 on the most endangered places list. This was the home of Scipio Africanus Jones, who was a well-known African-American attorney and civic leader in Little Rock, um, most well-known for defending the Elaine 12, uh, the men who were wrongfully convicted and sentenced to death uh, for their roles in the Elaine Race Massacre of 1919. This is in the Dunbar Historic District in Little Rock. And as you can see, it's in rough shape in this photo, but it's in even rougher shape now. This is from that same year, 2018. This is the interior, which it's, I mean, it's trashed. It needs to be cleaned out. There was um, a fire set in the building, uh, probably people just trying to keep warm. And so you can see damage to the front porch there and then from the rear of the building as well. But we've worked diligently to, there's a whole long story that goes along with the ownership and getting a clear title to this house that I won't include now because of time, but we've worked to help resolve that. And now there's a nonprofit that has clear title to the property. And that happened last summer is when that finally got transferred to them. And we've worked with the city of Little Rock to keep the building secured repeatedly, having to replace uh, plywood over the doors because people just really want to get in there. Um, so hopefully, this will be saved. The BB African American School. Um, this was on the most endangered list years ago, I think in 2010. And it's a little one room school building. You can see major issues with the roof and missing doors and windows uh, for years. Um, but this is probably the last example of, of a school of this type from this era of segregated education that's still standing in White County. And after it was included on the most endangered list and we uh, worked for a little while soon after that and then efforts kind of fell by the wayside, but Preserve Arkansas was contacted by the property owner who wanted to donate this and we were able to work with the city of BB to accept it. And they were working on an application for the Arkansas Register of Historic Places uh, before the pandemic. So hopefully we can continue that work with them. The Lattimore Tourist Home is in Russellville, and this, um, again, years in the making for this project, uh, but this was uh, provided overnight accommodations and meals for African Americans. Um, it was the only listing in the Negro Motorist Green Book between Little Rock and Fort Smith for people to stay and have safe place. And it, I think what's going to happen, hopefully, um, is that the city of Russellville is now involved, and hopefully this is going to get moved just right down the block into James Park and relocated. That's going to be the only way uh, to save it. There's a picture of the Green Book with the Russellville listing for Lattimore. The Perry Depot, we've worked a lot on this in the past few years. This is the last wood frame depot on the Rock Island line west of Little Rock, and it was facing imminent demolition by the railroad. So it was moved and we helped um, fundraise and facilitate this process with the Perry County Historical and Genealogical Society who's worked tirelessly on this effort. And then we helped to get them a grant um, from rural development to raise the level, um, bring in some shale fill and raise up the elevation there and get that set back on a new foundation out of the floodplain and put a new roof on it. Uh, so it's stabilized, but there's still more work to do. Fitzgerald Station is in Springdale. And this site um, is most significant because of the barn that you see on the left, which dates from the 1850s and was used um, in the Butterfield Overland Mail Route. Uh, they used it as a, as a horse and mule barn. And so this is a significant historic site um, in Springdale. And recently, the Northwest Arkansas Trailblazers group acquired this 
and they've built some some wonderful mountain biking trails back behind it on the mountain um, but they gave this parcel to the city of Springdale um, so hopefully they will be able to rehabilitate these properties I know they're they're fenced and secured and I've been told there's uh, someone from the parks department from the city who lives on site to kind of keep an eye on things and this is the last one I have is downtown Pine Bluff the whole downtown commercial district has been put on the most endangered list over the years and you see the Hotel Pines on the left, which there had been progress with that, kind of stalled out as far as I know now. And the building on the right, we've been very involved with uh, preventing that from being demolished, um, even going as far as to be involved with the lawsuit against uh, the property owner because it's in a local ordinance historic district. But there's progress in downtown Pine Bluff. If you haven't been there um, in a while, I'd encourage you to, to go and take a look. Um, they've done a, a huge streetscape project downtown, and that's what you see in these photos. And we now have a searchable database. You can check it out on our website, which is preservearkansas.org, and you can search for all of the previously most endangered places listings. And this is what we, we try, we strive to do these things that are on the screen. Um, but whenever something's on the most endangered places list, it makes it an advocacy priority for us. And we try to match properties with their appropriate funding mechanisms and just to provide provide assistance for the owners. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if we have enough time. All right. Uh, thank you, Rachel. We do have a number of questions, uh, but before that, I want to let people know that the Encyclopedia of Arkansas will take entries on any National Register property or Arkansas Register of Historic Places property. So if you're concerned about a particular property and it is listed on the National or Arkansas Register of Historic Places, that may be a good way to get uh, some attention to the property. Um, like I said, we've got a number of questions, but but I'm going to, I, I have one real quick for you um, about the War Memorial Golf Course because you mentioned uh, the city's plans, potential plans with the land to turn it into uh, soccer, uh, soccer fields and, and the like, and how that would mess with the, the rolling hills. So historic preservation isn't just preserving the structures, but sort of the larger integrity of the landscape too? Yes. Um, so in the case of War Memorial Golf Course, it's listed in the National Register, it's the golf course, not the entire park, okay. just the golf course, which is about 90 acres though. But you know, you saw some of the structures in the clubhouse that are there, but the vast majority of that National Register listed property is the golf course. Mm -hmm. And the golf course, the holes haven't been changed that much since the course was laid out in the 30s. There have been changes that it was still found eligible for National Register listing. Whereas their proposal, which, you know, nothing is set in stone, I know that, but the proposal is that I think seven baseball and softball fields would be out in that main green space where the core part of the golf course was, which I can only imagine would necessitate leveling all that ground. So, I mean, if the city were to plant a lot of trees and turn it into a walkway, you know, a, a nice walking path, that wouldn't necessarily mess with the integrity as much as flattening it and turning it into, yeah. you know, I'm just saying, as long as we've got one golf course down, <laughs> not, not being a fan of the sport myself, I don't think we need to, anyhow, <laughs> we have a number of questions. Um, wasn't there money donated by the Fletchers for the upkeep of the Terry Mansion or some kind of endowment? There was an endowment established in the 1980s when the Decorative Arts Museum opened. Mm -hmm. And so that endowment um, was held by the Arkansas Arts Center. And so that's that's part of this of this process. I mean, discussions are ongoing. I'll just say that. Okay. But, but yes, there, there was an endowment. And you're saying was past tense, has it all been used up? There, there may still be an endowment. <laughs> okay. Know, it, it's Again, yeah, it's it's being investigated and discussed. Okay. Um, 
Are there not already discussions about how to develop the lot after the house is torn down? For Pike Fletcher Terry? Yes. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, hold on just a moment. Oh. Uh, one asks, where is the Missouri and North Arkansas Depot and Leslie uh, on the list? Is it is that another endangered property? I don't think that that was ever on the most endangered places list. It's not it's not been nominated that I'm aware of. I know the depot. Right. It's gotten grant funding, I believe, for restoration. I'm not sure if it needs more work. Last time I went by there, it looked OK. OK. Ooh, hold on. Someone says reinvestment and we're more. Wait. Hold on. This is reinvestment in War Memorial Park to make it the central park of our city to build baseball fields, open air lawn entertainment, dog park, multi use trails, expand the lake, picnic and pavilion areas, trail connections, green space, additional parking. I think someone's pasting some of the uh, okay. city's language. Uh, yeah, and I've got to back up. I was thinking about the St. Joe Depot, the depot at Leslie. Yes, I remember that one now. And it's kind of like in a weird, in a weird spot. It was like in the middle of the lumber yard. And that one, I don't think that one's been listed either on the most endangered place list, but it's not the one I was thinking of that's in good shape. Okay. So I don't know. You should nominate it. Okay. And is there, is there an easy way to nominate properties for this list? Yes. We always put out the call for nominations in February, and okay. then they're usually due by the end of March. So at that point, or you could contact me anytime with the information on the screen, and I'd be happy to, to share the nomination form. It just gets updated, you know, very minor tweaks to the due dates, but it's pretty much the same form. Every now, what, what are the criteria for nomination? Because you know the school in Pocahontas isn't on the National Arkansas registers due to roof modification. Right. right. So in that case, the committee felt that it was historic, even though it wasn't in our eligible any longer, that it held such an important place in people's hearts and the community and that there was such strong local support to save it. They felt that it merited listing. OK. And so, you know, it's they evaluate it kind of on a case by case basis. But that local support piece is is a big part of it too. Mm -hmm. What's what's the most creative reuse of a property like this you've seen? Oh, creative reuse. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you know, I, I think a lot of people get stuck on the idea that it has to be used for the same thing it was built as. No, absolutely mm -hmm. not. Um, I'm not thinking of anything that's super duper out of this world that's off the most endangered list, but mm -hmm. just some creative reuses in Arkansas at like Superior Bathhouse Brewery. Yeah. The only brewery I think in the world or in a national park um, that uses the hot spring water. And what about Bark Bar in Little Rock? I don't think that building was ever on the most endangered list, but it was definitely deteriorating before the current owners bought it. So yeah, there's all kinds of uses. It can be anything. Or I'm thinking, you know, St. Joseph's, the, the former orphanage in North Little Rock is, is mm -hmm. now, you know, they rent out studio space to artists and they have, right. You know, it's it's become sort of a nexus for local agricultural initiatives. Yes, that too. Um, and the Kramer School, whenever it was first rehabilitated, it was for artist loss mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah, that's that's been something that's been a popular, relatively popular use for historic buildings. But the agricultural side, maybe not so much. Right. Okay. Well, I believe that's all the questions we have. Again, thank you very much. Uh, Rachel Patton's contact information is on the screen if you want to suggest a property or just drop a line. And we really appreciate it. Really appreciate you being here. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Thank you for I, watching. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll have you again next year. Okay, but I hope I so. Do, I do like that you pair the endangered properties with the success stories. I think 
it's important to show people these these things you know can recover so absolutely all right well thank you much and if you want to share this presentation with everyone it will be on youtube here in the near future so you can check it out there at the youtube channel of the central arkansas library system uh take care everyone stay safe stay healthy and we'll talk to you later okay bye thank you